welcome back to Dunstan Kiwi Bread. Well, it's now time for Kiwi Bread Abroad, and we're back in Australia with New Zealand Bloodstock's Richard Haynes. Hello and welcome to Kiwi Bread Abroad, brought to you by the Singapore Turf Club, racing at Kranji every Friday and Sunday. Well, today we catch up with a young lady who has taken on a challenging yet exciting role here in Sydney. Her name is Vicky Leonard. Well, Vicky, can we call you a, a Sydney side now? You've been here for how many years have you been in Sydney now? I've uh, been in Sydney now for three years, so uh, pretty settled in, into the lifestyle here, but I, I don't think I'd ever be called an Australian for sure. Give us an idea of, of your background and how you came to the role you have with Arrowfield. Um, well, I grew up in, in Timaru, at, at a small farm just out on the outskirts of Timaru. I um, had a pretty typical upbringing, rode ponies and played a fair bit of rugby. Um, I went to university at Otago, um, but my, my interest in racing sort of was gathered from a childhood background in the harness racing. My dad is, is a pretty keen uh, owner of paces, and um, my interest in thoroughbred racing came about through doing a project at school on Sir Tristram. And from there, I, I closely followed Cambridge Stud and, and uh, worked at Cambridge Stud uh, through my university holidays. Um, and during my time at Otago Uni, I, I worked part-time at White Robe Lodge for BJ Anderton and, and Wayne and Karen Stewart, which was, which was great. And then um, went on to, to work for the New Zealand Racing Board um, for a couple of years. Um, after, after I had done the graduate program at the New Zealand Racing Board, I applied for Darley Flying Start. And going into Darley Flying Start, I had the goal of um, getting to know John Massaro a bit better. I, I really admired his industry leadership and it was an avenue that I, I saw myself going down um, long term. And so that was a goal going into the course, which I let Ollie and Ollie Tating and Clodagh Kavner and that know, so they made sure that during my time on the course I spent um, my placement with, with John at Arrowfield and, um, and upon graduation I, I asked him for if I, if I could come and work here, which he took on. So it's, it's fair to say you were bitten by the bug very, very early and it, as we all know, it's a great game to be in and you've gone on with it. Yeah, well, it was a bit of a funny story how it sort of came about. I mean, I'd grown up, I always had a love of horses, um, but specifically thoroughbred racing um, came about when, when my teacher asked us to do a, a famous person project and I requested to do a horse. And I was allowed to do Sir Tristram for that study and I wrote to Sir Patrick and asked if he had any specific information that I could use for my project. And he sent down this big box of stats and a hat and a, and a, and a t-shirt and a big photo of Sir Tristram and it, it was just amazing and it really um, it, w it was really from from doing that that caught the bug. I sent the project up to Sir Patrick when I'd finished and he wrote a letter saying well done, well done on the project. Um, love you to come and visit Cambridge Stud if you're ever in the area. And so my next school holidays, you know, a bright eyed uh, 11 year old, myself and my pony club friend went up and spent a couple of days at Cambridge Stud um, and it was amazing. I mean, we, we spent time in the folding unit, we saw Zabil covering and it was all pretty surreal and, and spent an hour of, even in the paddock grooming eight carat, which I look back now on was pretty amazing. Um, and from there, you know, Sir Patrick said at the time, if you're ever old enough, we, if you still love racing, make sure you uh, come and work for me at Cambridge. And during my first uh, uni holidays, I um, held him to it and went up and did my first yelling prep with them. You're in a lucky position or a good position. You, you are a person that can make a call and a judgement on the New Zealand industry and the Australian industry and probably the, the global industry given your daily flying start background. So you've had a taste of racing and the breeding world in a number of different countries. Yeah, I've been really lucky to get a, a full, like uh, a global view of, of most things. Um, Having worked uh, during university at, at the grassroots level with White Robe Lodge at Cambridge Start, I, I rode track work at Trentham when I was with the New Zealand Racing Board. And then moving into the corporate side, I saw that um, one of my long-term goals would be to come back um, into the New Zealand Racing Board one day down the line where I could be in a position to make a difference. 
and I saw that Dalia Flying Start would provide the best avenue to, to see the industry at a global scale and really make the contacts required um, to make an impact. And touching on Arrowfield, they are a, a, a real power a powerhouse as far as farms go here. Uh, what's it like to work in the Arrowfield offices? It's, there is a strong Kiwi flavour here. Yeah, there is. There is. We call it Arrowtown sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's, it's great working. I mean, we've, we have, we've had a massive season and um, a, a really, it's really an honour to be working alongside um, a great team. Um, also, I mean, the, the roster's flying. We've, been, we've had a really good year with Redoots topping the Premiership and Snitzel coming in second. And we've also had the exciting addition to the roster of Dundee. So all things are moving in the right direction here. It must be a buzz to get a horse like Dundeal. He, he is a star, simple as that. Yeah. Um, I dare say you, you're looking forward to seeing how he goes at his first season at Stud, but he's a great acquisition and he's a Kiwi. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, been, it's been awesome launching his stud career from a marketing perspective because there's just been so much to draw on. And we've also been able to work really closely with um, his, his Kiwi syndicate and they're, they're a great team. Um, Murray Anderson's a terrific guy and working closely with um, Baker Racing to get to get his stud career launched and he's just an awesome stallion like he, he, he's he I think he was a, a fat man in hiding he's really let down beautifully over the last couple of months. So what do you love about Sydney and can you see yourself here for a little while? Yeah well, the, the Sydney racing's quite amazing I mean the uh, the championships moving on is, is going to be uh, a great thing to follow closely and, and working Beside John, I'm able to see how it develops and how things work out there. Um, and the breeding industry here and being involved in Arrowfield's uh, a great learning curve for me. I, I certainly see myself being here for the next few years. Um, should in a perfect world, I'd love to return to New Zealand one day and and hopefully eventually get into a leadership role there. Um, but in the meantime, um, there's a lot moving in New South Wales particularly by Racing New South Wales, which John's chairman, and I think I'll um, gain a lot of benefit out of seeing uh, how things progress here in the meantime. It's fitting that Vicky Leonard spends some time under the tutelage of Brian Anderton, and we wish her all the best in her current endeavours. Well, it's now time to take a look at our pedigree of the week, the Graham and Debbie Rogerson trained and Waikato owned costume. Dressing up was no longer required when costume became queen in her own right in this year's Group 1 Herbie Dyke Stakes at Te Rapa. The Graham and Debbie Rogerson trained Savabelle Mere went one better than her Group 1 Thorndon Mile second placing in the 2,000 metre weight for age feature to add to the already momentous haul of Waikato stud bred and raced Group 1 winners. Costumes dam is the O'Reilly mare disguised, who had already left the no excuse needed listed soliloquy stakes winner masquerade. Costumes breeding is Waikato stud through and through, and only embellished the records of both O'Reilly as a reliable source of winners as a broodmare sire, and Savabeel's status as a rising star of the sire's ranks. Costume was Savabeel's fifth Group 1 winner after Sangster, Lucia Valentina, Scarlet Lady and Brambles and his 33rd stakes winner overall. Costume is sex balanced bred 5x5 five five to Northern Dancer. Wider stars from Costume's family include Peru Horse of the Year Alcazar, Pre de Labbe de Longchamp winner Wizkid, champion Argentinian cult Handsome Halo, champion Brazilian filly Ever Love and Royal Ascot winner God's Walk. Costume returned to the racetrack this season and backed up her win in the Herbie Dyke Stakes by adding another Group 1 to her name, taking out the Livermore Classic on the final day of the Hawke's Bay Spring Carnival. This week's Pedigree of the Week is proudly brought to you by International Animal Health Products. Well, that wraps up another edition of Kiwi Bread. Join me again next week when we take a look at the first season foals of Singapore sensation Super Easy and check on the progress of Westbury stud-based sire Swiss Ace. I'll catch you all then.